Hello everyone. This, as I'm sure you're aware from the title, is an overview of the character Becca Valentine from Gene Roddenberry's Andromeda. Becca Valentine is a human born to parents Ignatius Valentine, a trader of sorts, and Talia Winterkirk, a senator. Her mother would leave when she was age seven, leaving her and her brother Raphael Valentine to be raised by their father, a man who would struggle with addiction and brushes with the law. Also present in her childhood was her Uncle Sid, her father's business partner, who was played by the irrepressible Q making Andromeda part of the Star Trek multiverse. Okay, well, maybe not. But we would have John DeLancey of Star Trek fame coming to play the role of Uncle Sid for the Andromeda series. He would play one of the more fun, semi-reoccurring characters in the show. She would grow up on the ship where she was born, Eureka Maru. Many years later, when her father passed away, she would inherit the vessel, as prior to this, her brother had already left. And with her uncle Sid already having left several years prior, due to a falling out with her father Ignatius, she would begin to form her own crew. The first member of her crew would be a man named Bobby Jensen, with whom she would become romantically involved. Later, she would recruit Seamus Harper, followed next by Rev Ben and Vaxpack, who would meet an untimely end due to a tear in his spacesuit. This would necessitate the taking on of another crew member, as Bobby Jensen was also gone by this point, which would then see the recruiting of Trans Gemini, the final crew member before they discovered the Andromeda Ascendant trapped in the event horizon of a black hole. Now, on the topic of trans for a second, if you've seen the show, and spoiler warning if you haven't, you'll know trans can basically see the future, and she's there to help restore the Commonwealth, sort of, but she's always been moral, and she's aboard the ship likely because she knew that it was going to find the Andromeda. However, Becca had only recruited another crew member due to one of hers dying, so knowing that, did Trance arrange for the accident with Vaxpag's suit, or did she know it was going to happen and just allowed it to happen so she could take his place knowing it was for the greater good? Would she be willing to sacrifice an innocent man's life, this innocent as far as we know, in order to accomplish this? Anyway. Back to Becca. Becca and her crew would go on to recover the Andromeda Ascendant from the event horizon of the black hole, but would then be betrayed by their employer and end up working with Captain Hunt in order to save his ship from being sold on to a dictator who had intentions of using it as a weapon of mass destruction. Going forward from here, Becca and her crew would sign up with Captain Dylan Hunt on his mission to restore the system's commonwealth, serving as his first officer and guide in a, for him, now very unfamiliar galaxy. Going forward, we would see her become more invested in the mission, initially believing it to be probably little more than a fool's errand, but as time went on, believing that it was actually doable. In the first couple of seasons, you have the beginnings of what you see as her storyline arc, where she's going to fit into the bigger universe of Andromeda, how they're planning to utilize her character, what direction they're going to take her in. You get little tidbits of information, like you find out she can change her hair color at will, only to discover in a later episode that there's more to that ability than just aesthetic. She can change her hair color using little nanites in her hair, she thinks purple, or her turns purple. But in a later episode, she is tortured by her Uncle Sid for information, and you discover that the nanites actually have encoded data on them that could be used to blackmail him, which her father had placed there to protect himself when him and her Uncle Sid had committed a crime. Some of the early stories involving Becca revolved around the recovery of something known as the Engine of Creation but this story was largely abandoned after being hinted at and mentioned here and there, and them actually recovering a piece. The long-term story originally envisioned by the show's first showrunner had been that they would recover the engine of creation and that through whatever means, Becca would merge with the engine of creation. 
becoming an entirely new life form and actually be the one to defeat the series' big bad, the Abyss, at a later date. But I guess someone didn't want to share the spotlight, and as the seasons went on, there were less Becca heavy episodes, although she did get a few episodes still to shine as the seasons went on, and there were hints at this original story. For example, in season 4, she got to play a slightly more duplicitous side to her character when Tia Anasazi returned and Becca would seemingly switch sides and become working with Tyr against the Andromeda and against the Commonwealth. Quick spoiler warning for this bit, but later in Season 5, in a series low point, she has an affair with, due to what I can only guess is wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey reasons, or maybe Q, she has an affair with Drago Museveni, the founder and progenitor of the Nietzschean race, becoming their matriarch. This story breaks a lot of the show's earlier seasons continuity, where, to begin with, Drago Museveni is black, not white. I have read what I think may be fan fiction that this character was actually Paul Museveni, not Drago. Paul supposedly being the father or creator of Drago, later to be betrayed by him. There is more on that topic, but I'll cover it in a later video. Needless to say, even factoring that in, even if that is true, there still leaves a lot of questions in this story. Anyway, Becker was, for the most part, a well-used and well-written character, happily not falling in love with Dylan and remaining an independently strong character who was fun to watch go from less than trustworthy smuggler to honourable and invaluable member of the crew, without whom the mission would have failed in its first year. Outside of Andromeda, Lisa Ryder appears in Jason X, undoubtedly the best picture in the franchise, where she appears with co-star Lexa Doig in a role reversal which sees Ryder as an android and Doig as the human. She also appeared in another Gene Roddenberry series, Earth Final Conflict, and more recently in Killjoys, which if you haven't seen that series I highly recommend it. Overall, I like Lisa Ryder. I think she was well cast as Becca, and Becca was one of my favourite characters. She was well used, well written, and given plenty of good material to work with. Well, that's the end of this overview. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.